Hi guys, this is the Definite article for Grinder School, and today I'm going to be recording the beginning of a new series for you. Um, it's going to be a series of shorts, uh, there might be one or two longer videos in it, but mostly shorts because I think it fits the shorts format better. And I'm going to be offering you something of an insight into what's going on in 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 high stakes hands on um, well mostly on stars but also elsewhere when they play elsewhere although since full tilt j just removed the nosebleed games i don't think they'll be elsewhere very often um so i am going to be primarily discussing six max no limit hands um there might be one or two heads up hands um, but as I feel much less confident with basic preflop ranges, etc., and heads up, uh, it will be mostly six max. Um, so I'm just going to offer a little bit of insight into why I'm doing this, and I, perhaps more to the point, why I think I'm qualified to do this. Um, clearly, I'm not as good a player as pretty much anyone at any of these tables, unless they've got some big fish. Um, but because the way I play is heavily grounded in theory, um, I think certainly I'm decently capable of seeing something that a given player does, especially in, in, in terms of sizing, etc., and reasoning my way to it um, in 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 a way which which hopefully should be relatively in, in, insightful and certainly interesting and possibly helpful for those of you who um, maybe haven't done this before. So we're going we're going to start today with this hand that's posted by Moda here. Um, it's going to be the bottom hand. I just scrolled up a bit so you so you can't see the results. Um, and it's between Four Haley, who is by all accounts one of the best two or three um, six max no limit players in the world. Um, whether she or he is number one um, depends on depends on one's specific assessment, but certainly um, it's there. There are that sort of area a lot, along with people like OTB, Red Baron, and um, oh god, um, people. I guess you could have just about call. Um, maybe you could call sourced. Say source was still in there, although that's less certain. Anyway, um, so what what happens in this hand? Four Haley Min raises a cut off. Um, the small blind three bets to just under eight big blinds um for highly four bets to 20 big blinds and the and and the small blind calls so we're just going to quickly look, look at what sort of ranges we're going to be expecting here um so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to mess around with um, offering relative weighting, etc. Here, I, so I, I'm, I'm not going to remove particular suits unless it's pretty obvious. Um, and in, 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 instead, I'm, I'm just going to try and give, give a general idea what the um, the hands that are there or thereabouts the edge of the range may or may not be included, and we can assume something between a zero and 100% weighting for all of them. So. For Haley's range for raising and for betting, I'm assuming includes jacks plus it might be slightly tighter, it might be slightly wider. Um, I'm, go I'm going to include some some percentage of ace queen as well because that's certainly possible. And to be honest, I I'm not perfectly certain what um, how the bluffing range is going to be constructed here. Um, you might see some Susie connectors. So we're going to look at hands like 10-9 suited and possibly 10-8 suited, stuff like that. Um, so some suited aces possibly, although given pre-flop sizings, I've, I'm get, I get the feeling that most of those would be called against the three bets. Um, as, I, as I suppose would be some of the stronger suited connectors, but I think it's more reasonable to assume with the suited connectors that they're going to be four bet with some frequency to give 
um, for at least four bet range playability on certain boards. Um, and I think we can also possibly expect to see some stuff like King Queen off from time to time, although again, I think that's probably going to be called. So probably more like King Jack off. Um, so pretty much some stuff around this region that we, we could expect to see raised pre-flop. Um, let's add in a few more examples. So again, these are just examples. Um, that's not necessarily excluding any, any specific bluff. So we're not going to do um, strict, strict accuracy calculations. We're just using this to keep track of what ranges they also have, and, and indeed certainly pre-flop, it, it's pretty tough to um, use strict, strict accuracy calculations. Um, we're going to assume that the small blind is three betting depolarized, um, not because that's the only possible strategy he could be using, um, but because in prior hand I've seen I've seen this guy play by um, by reading the high stakes thread. Um, it, it seems to be at least a part of his strategy. So in some situations, he will three better small blind depolarized against against the cut off. So we're going to give him a a range of calling four bets, which includes some percentage of aces to protect his range. Um, probably jacks through eight. Um, he's he's also going to guess a, He's also going to have a lot of hands which he calls because they're playable post flop. So. I guess we're going to see something like that. Um, as for other hands, he might call Ace Queen off, um, but I, I don't see I see him having an especially wide range here. I mean, if if he's if he's free betting, say seventeen percent in that spot, then to defend often enough against the four bets, let's assuming he's jamming, he has a five bet range of about four to five percent of all hands he he do he does only need to defend about six to seven percent by calling so we we can definitely assume he has one or two more hands in there but I, I don't think that's wholly unreasonable and i certainly wouldn't expect him to have hands like king jack off because that's just so unplayable post flop on a lot of boards so we'll just use this to keep a log of those ranges um, and remember, they aren't going to have all the hands in those ranges 100% of the time because they, they may, for instance, want to use mixed strategies, especially with hands like aces. So, whoops, you weren't meant to see the results there. Sorry if you did. Um, so, these small blind checks, which, well, to be honest, I think it's going to be certainly feasible for him to have a donking range on, on this flop um, because... It's, it's 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 a flop which certainly favours his range um, to his opponents. While he probably doesn't have a great density of pocket queens in this range, I think he's much more likely to have jack ten suited. I think he's much more likely to have pocket nines, pocket eights. <clears throat> he's more likely probably to have some two pair hands. Um, <clears throat> and as a stretch, he might just about have um, queen nine suited. Though I doubt that quite substantially, quite considerably. Um, he also he also still has aces some percentage of the time. He has a lot of his ranges is, is flush draw or backed off flush draw hands because his because remember how heavily his his range was weighted towards suited hands pre flop. He has a lot of queen x hands. Um, so he has ace queen king queen queen jack suited. Um, and also he has he has a lot of decent he has some good shots and pair plus good shot hands. Whereas for Haley, I, I would expect, although in or, in order to provide playability on boards like this, um, I'd expect, as we said earlier, um, him to have some hands which do hit this board very hard in his four bet range. So he might sometimes four bet jacks and suited. He might he, he might also be playing a mixed strategy pre pre flop with hands like nine eight suited. Uh, I'd expect him to have those hands a much, a much lesser percentage of the time. Whereas, if nineteen Dan, a, nineteen Dan is playing a depolarized small, small blind three batting range, then he's simply going to be calling those hands pre flop one hundred percent of the time. So 
it seems that, that Dan does have a much stronger range on his flop. And so I would think it would be good for him to donk some sense of the time. But as as as, as I should keep mentioning, that's, that's just my opinion and... First and and, and 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 first, I don't think it's good for him to have a hundred percent donking range. And second, he he could just not have a donking range because he's better than me and he knows more than me. Um, but depending on how often he's donking, that that should that should definitely affect um, the cutoffs for Haley's betting frequency. So here we we're going to see um, situations where if. Dan is donking a lot, then, although I would assume he's still leaving some knotted hands, especially hands like Jack Center clubs, which are relatively invulnerable even on this board, um, in his checking range to protect it. For Haley, all of a sudden, when Dan checks, gains a pretty substantial range advantage. Whereas, if we're in a situation where Dan has a low flop donking frequency, then for Haley's uh, range advantage is much lesser and, and he might not even and he might not even have a range advantage so what we're assuming about for Haley's check back range is that it's it's going to be a range which is pretty strong we're expect, we're going to expect him to check back this this flop a very decent percentage of time and often with most one pair hands um, it's also a range which, given how how I think his how we've discussed how I think his four bet range um, should be constructed pre, I don't think it's likely to have much pure air in it because I think a lot of his four bet bluffs at least flop a pair on this on this board. Although he could have hands occasionally like ace two is ace two of spades, which is just complete trash here. So I think he'd check back and give up with those, which isn't a problem because he has so much he can defend with on the turn anyway. Um, so it's it again. I'm I'm going to actually pretty much abandon the the use of equilab to use to use specific to show specific ranges here. Um, for for, for four Haley at least. Um, and Dan because I don't know his donking strategy specifically, but the point is that both players' ranges should, should be significantly weakened by the flop checks. But I but I would expect four Haley to be checking back most one pair hands on a flop certainly, and sometimes stronger hands and especially hands which are one pair with clubs. I would expect Ace King of clubs to be a check back most of the time and sometimes. Some other not not club draws. If he has ten nine of clubs, I'd expect him to check that that back, etc. Um. So yeah. With with that said, if if Dan is using a very high frequency donking strategy on this flop, I think for Haley might might end up betting a lot more aces and kings and ace queens high pants on this board. So we we reach a turn. Um. I think. Ranges are very close to those for reaching the flop, possibly. Dan's actually might be very weak here, but because he's more acutely aware of what his range is than, than I am, certainly. Um, I would assume that the fact that he is betting makes it less likely that he does have a really weak range. So, so Dan chooses to lead this turn, and... When he does reach his turn, in, in deciding whether or not to have a betting range, etc., I think there are two main considerations that he has to have. One is that for Haley rarely has air in this spot, so he can he can start turning some relatively strong hands into bluffs. Second is the is that he may or may not, depending on his strategy, have a reasonable number of knotted hands in his range which is looking to get all in with by the river. So that would indicate quite a high bluffing frequency, which because it's on the turn and he has a street left to play, um, to anyone who hasn't read Janda's book, um, to quickly summarise, the you can have a higher bluffing frequency on the turn than you can on the river, because when you bluff the river, I mean, this is assuming perfect polarisation, but it roughly approximates to situations without perfect polarisation. 
But as I was saying, yeah, when when you reach the river, your betting range, assuming for perfect polarization, has an has an equity of pots, um, has an EV of pot rather. So when when you're on a turn, you, you can you can you can assume that the hands which you're going to be able to bluff the river with are is are essentially value hands because you win with them. They're going to win, and that and that's the essential point. Um, so you can use those as 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 your value range, so to speak. You can't see, but I'm doing those sort of vague arsehole-ish inverted commas in the air. Um, so so you can have a higher bluffing frequency here. Um, and and something that we should note is that given this preflop range, I mean this isn't perfect, but you can see that on this particular board, he has very little, which isn't at least a pair. Um, so pretty much any th the only things which aren't at least a pair are ace jack, king jack, king ten, and ace ten suited. Some of those are not flush draws. So a quarter of those combos are not flush draws. Uh, are flush? In fact, half of those combos are flush draws because the diamond came on a turn, and the other half are just gut shots. Um, but I, I certainly think we can expect him to bet all of those. Um, Depending on his specific flop donking strategy, he may or may not also want to turn hands like 10 9 suited and jack 9 suited into bluffs so as to gain an appropriate um, an appropriate turn bluffing frequency. But we don't know about about his flop donking strategy here, so we're not going to specifically speculate, we're just going to remember that those could be in his range. I think he's very obviously going to bet um, two pair in bot and the bottom set hands. He's going to bet most of his straights, although in, on, a, on a particularly plucky day, he could decide to check jack ten, jack ten of clubs or diamonds. Um, and I'd expect him to bet aces most of the time, because I, I think Four Haley is going to be betting nearly all stronger hands on the flop. Um, he might also bet ace-queen, but I, I think that's getting into the sort of region where we're less certain. So I think when he does, when he, when he does check, he would mostly have a queen... Or jacks or tens. So, with that in mind, for for Haley chooses to call the turn. Now, we've we've just noted that that Dan's betting range should be polarized and and his value range should be quite strong here. Now, the thing the thing about this is that. Four Haley still has a lot of hands which are decent bluff catches. So, for instance, a, if, if he has Ace King, it beats all the bluffs just discussed. Though, the problem with Ace King is that you don't really block any value hands on this board. So, on, you, you do block Aces and you do block Ace Queen if that's going to be bet. But you, but you also block almost all, all the bluffs so if you remember ace jack ace 10 king jack and king 10 were dan's possible bluffs and here ace king has a blocker to all of them which is going to significantly reduce the frequency that they're going to be in dan's range so ace king isn't going to want to call but i think in order to have sufficient bluff catches He's definitely going to be calling ace queen. He's definitely going to have to call aces, though. I'm not sure how happy he'll be about it. He might actually fold um, aces if he has a club and a diamond, simply because he blocks so many. Um, I, actually, I, actually, actually, that's backwards since um, since we since we assumed that Dan would be betting whether or not he had a flush draw. So, a, so ace is roughly the same hand. If if anything. It's better to have a club and a club or a diamond in it because it means that for Haley is less vulnerable um, to um, to Dan's bluffing range. But also, I, I think he'd be more inclined um, to call hands which which at least at least are a pair which doesn't block um, these these four hands here. Um, and also, I think he's pretty clearly going to be calling kings with a club if he chooses to check back the flop. 
Japs is, I, I think, also going to be a decent call because he blocks Jack 10. Although you do have the downside that um, Dan's Bluffs now have an overcard as well. But with that said, although they have the overcard, we with Jacks you also have either a chop when they get there or you have blockers to them getting there. So that's a decent situation for you. Um, yeah, and I think with a gut shot or a gut shot or less, he just has a very clear fold because both ranges are very strong on this board. Um, the river's a club, the three of clubs, but the specific rank doesn't really matter. Um, if if we remember what we thought Dan's bluffs were on a turn, that's for Haley's range. If we remember what we thought Dan's bluffs were were on a turn, you'll you'll notice that we thought that only about a quarter of them were clubs or were two clubs hands i mean sometimes he's going to bet jack nine of clubs or ten nine of clubs or whatever he might have in his range but not many of them got there so he so he still has at least 12 combos of bluffs from hit from these he's probably not going to want to value bet ace queen on a river if, if he bets it on the turn he might not want to bet aces on the river although i think it's still probably just about a value bet um and clearly he's still going to want to bet sets and two pair on the river. So what we're seeing here is is, is a spot in which Forhead needs a calling frequency, but Dan can actually quite easily be bluff heavy. Assuming that he was balanced on the turn. Because he's he's got a lot of hands, especially if he's betting A's Queen on the turn. He all of a sudden has these 16 combos which he can no longer value bets. And Oh, and only a few of though, and only a few of his bluff combos got there in order to become value bets. So he can certainly easily over, be over bluffing. But also, some something we have to note is that for Haley's hands, which have a club in them, act, actually become very good calling hands now, because they all of a sudden block his value, block Dan's value range to a much greater extent than they can block bluffs. And this includes hands with the ace of clubs and king clubs in them. Um, because if you remember how, if you remember Dan's range was primarily suited pre flop. So when Four Haley has, say, ace queen with the ace of clubs, he, he blocks not flushes. But he but he doesn't block at any missed draws like ace jack or or ace ten, simply because Dan doesn't have those pre flop, which wouldn't have made enough flush on this river. So having a, having the ace or king, king king of clubs here, the king of clubs is, isn't quite as good, but having the ace of clubs certainly is very good. Makes it a very makes a hand a very good hand to call with for Haley. For, for Haley. It might be the case that. He that's in order to reach an optimal calling frequency because Dan's betting three quarters, three quarters pot on the river here. He he needs to call with hold on. He needs to call with four sevenths of his overall range. So that's about um, fifty seven percent, I think. So he needs to call with about fifty seven percent of his overall range, which probably includes more hands than just those with the ace of king or king of clubs. But he, his range should be primarily. Hands with the ace or king of clubs, and especially those, ideally with a pair blocker. Um, although aces and kings with the, with the, with the ace or king of clubs are still going to be very clearly within the um, calling fifty seven percent of Four Haley's range. And I I mean I I, ha I had seen the result before I recorded this video, but. That's pretty much a, a result that I might have expected here. Dan has ace ten of diamonds, um, which would would almost certainly bluff the turn and did bluff the river. It might be used as part of a of, as part of a flop donking range some of the time. So this particular result might lead us to believe that Dan's flop donking frequency isn't particularly high here. Um, the reason why it's a particularly attractive flop donk. Is that on a board like this, it's not really a hand that wants to call against the bets, despite the fact that it has a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw, simply because the rest of Dan's range is so strong. Um, and Four Haley has kings with the king of clubs. 
Um, he blocks King Jack of Spades and King Ten of Spades, but again, clearly there. Um, that's that's not a, hu a hugely negative consideration. Okay, guys, I I hope this has been useful and fun. I've been in definite article for Grinder School. Um, just a quick notice. I can't I can't really take any more students on now until mid June um, because I have finals. I'm trying to slow down with my coaching for that period. Um, but as of mid June, I will be looking to take more students on, uh, possibly slash probably. Um, so do get in touch with me now, and I and you can reserve a place, so to speak. Um, and good luck at the tables.